So now we will discuss section 26. Previously we discussed section 25, of course. But this section 26, as I emphasized earlier, whenever you read section 26, you have to cross-read this with section 22, paragraph B, and section 24, paragraph B2, and section 73, paragraph B and D. This is all about the General Professional Partnerships class or the GPPs. Call it GPPs. GPPs are not liable for income tax. Okay. Instead, the partners are personally liable for the respective income taxes. What's your basis? Is of course, Section 26. So here you go. A General Professional Partnerships as such shall not be subject to the income tax imposed under this chapter. You remember this class, the word chapter, because this chapter belongs to income taxation or a chapter on, well, the individual, income on income tax on individual. But it doesn't say that it is not subject to tax under this code. There are uh, just like this one. But then again, uh, the general professional partnership, although they are not uh, subjected to income tax imposed under this chapter, which is, which is chapter 3, they are actually liable for other taxes. We will go to that later. But who are liable, as I said earlier, the, the business partners or the, general, or the professional partners are liable for income tax only in their separate and individual capacities. Now, there is this Revenue Regulations 16-2008. You take note of, you remember this optional standard deduction class where you don't have to substantiate all the deductions. You just have to, okay, what's section 34? Let's go there. Paragraph L. Paragraph L of section 34 is all about the optional standard deduction, okay, or the OSD. The idea of this OSD is that in lieu of the deduction allowed under the, well, the subsections, section 34, the an individual subject to tax under section 24 other than a non-resident alien, okay, the non-resident alien not engaged in trade or business may elect a standard deduction in an amount not exceeding 40% of his gross sales or gross receipts, as the case may be. In the case of corporations subject to tax under Section 27A and 28A, it may also elect a standard deduction in an amount that exceeds 40% of its gross income as defined in Section 32. Okay, so this class, this one, the Revenue Regulations 16-2008 says there are possibilities that may arise when a, a GPP claims itemized deduction and the partners claim itemized deduction, okay? And the GPP claims optional standard deduction while partners claim itemized deduction. And the GPP claims itemized deduction while partners claim OSD. And GPP claims item or optional standard deduction and partners claim optional standard deduction on Sadao. Okay, the meaning of this class is that a partner, because as, as I've said, the partner is liable personally for the income tax or the income or the tax, supposedly the, uh, the share the constructive or the distributable share of the partners, right? It's not the GPP that pays this or the general professional partnership, but the partners should pay the income tax. But for purposes of um, determining, you remember the the basic uh, income profit and loss statement that I have illustrated in the board. You have this income less cost of sales, that's the gross sales and you or the gross income and you less the operating expenditures, the light, water, salary, etc., etc., and you get to have your net income, okay? Now, the net income now would then be divided 
by the partners. The partners will now report that as their gross income. Okay, so for example, there is a net income of 1 million and there are 5 partners. Okay, so net income after after the, the well, because there is, no, there is no tax for the GPP. So the example is there is this 1 million net income for the general professional partnership right at the end of the at the end of the year there are five part professionals in the firm and theoretically they should receive 200,000 each correct so this 200,000 which is deemed to have been received by the partner this 200,000 as according to section 32 this is the gross income of the partner, okay? And under Section 24, because unless the partner is receiving pure compensation income, which is not so in the case, so, uh, well, he's practicing his profession, okay? So, at the end of the year, he gets to have 200,000 share in the net profit. Now, this 200,000 is the gross this would be the gross income of the partner and he will now deduct the uh, this what do you call this the personal deductions or the personal exemptions and the standard or the allowable deductions under section 34 the, the idea here in section 34 is if the partnership already claimed that as a deduction in 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 its financial statements then the partner cannot anymore claim that as his personal deduction no double whammy here okay so i i hope you, you get the gist here the the idea here is that the gpp general professional partnership in order to get the the share for the partners it should make or it should prepare the financial statement or the basic profit and loss uh, however they do that and they would arrive at a net income which should be distributed to the partners okay now we are talking about general professional partnership class the gpp or the partners or the professionals now will receive maybe actually or constructively the 200000 the 1 million example and the 200000 now again will be reported as their gross income. They would now less their personal exemptions and less the allowable deductions. The allow I think this was asked in the bar or last year or maybe two years ago. So that if a GPP claims an itemized deduction, a partner may claim also an itemized deduction subject to the substantiation rule. Or if a GPP claims optional standard deduction at 20 percent the partners can claim itemized deduction if the gpp claims itemized deduction the partners may claim optional standard deduction or both of them claim optional standard deduction and you remember this the partner must the ordinary and necessary expense okay you take note of this provided that in claiming itemized deduction the partner is precluded in claiming expenses already claimed by the gpp so you have these two financial statements class you have this the financial statements of the gpp and the financial statement of the partners okay now uh, okay i will discuss about partnership I prepared something okay wait now here you go this class is that uh, okay you must take note that our laws or law treats differently GPPs the partners are individually liable for income tax based on what was earned by the GPP what the law does is to apportion the net income according to their sharing agreement then the income tax liability shall be computed according to section 24. This is based on section 26. And by now you should have a solid grasp of the distinction between a partner in a business partnership and a partner in GPP in so far as 
taxation is concerned. Okay? Whenever a partner in business partnership receives actively or constructively a share in the income, there is this final withholding tax of 10%. You remember? Section 24, paragraph B2. Uh, that should be collected from the partner. That's Section 24, paragraph B. The, the share in the income is considered by law as dividends. And it doesn't matter if the partner physically or act, and actually receive the dividends. That's Section 73, paragraph D. On the other hand, a partner in GPP would be subjected to creditable withholding tax. Okay? Whenever there is profit sharing, that's Section 57 in relation to Section 26. This is because... A partner in GPP is liable separately and individually. You must note that a person can be a partner in a business partnership and at the same time a partner in GPP. In that case, there are different tax incidents for the income received from BP and from B GPP by that person. So, okay, to illustrate, Mr. X is a partner in... ABC Limited Partnership and he is also a lawyer, Mr. X, Attorney X and he's also a partner of XYZ Law Firm so you have to know what are the tax incidents for the income that Mr. X receives from what was the corporation again? Uh, or the ABC Limited Partnership and the tax incidents or incident if attorney X gets a share from XYZ law firm okay but just remember when you when you encounter the word partnership in taxation in the bar maybe in a question immediately see to it if it is a business partnership or a GPP or general professional partnership if it is a business partnership then the tax rate on corporation applies and every everything else if it is the general general professional partnership then the tax rate on individual applies not on gpp but for the individual partners for the professionals also gpps are still liable for other taxes but percentage tax dst etc etc the law exempts them from income tax only. You remember section 26? And shifts the burden to individual partners. Okay? So, that's about it for section 26. I hope by now you have a solid grasp or a good grasp about partnerships, business partnerships, and you must be able to distinguish that from general professional partnerships in so far as taxation is concerned next we will discuss section 27 and i will break this down into several video lectures because this might be bloody okay so that's about it for section 26